Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the concluding lecture of the mini course on computation. And uh, before we start, maybe let me uh, read out the, the quote we also saw in the first introductory lecture. It's uh, the best theory inspired by practice and the best practice inspired by theory. I hope uh, this can, it's kind of the main, uh, also the main thing of uh, this lecture. So I want to use this as a start of the concluding lecture. Yes. So in the, uh, in the very beginning of uh, this lecture, or even when you first saw the, like the blog post of the, the mini course, we asked about the question of what is computation? And it seems that computation is related to so many things and what is what the computation is. Yeah, and now that we've gone so far, we like uh, walk through like uh, six uh, intense lectures and also three intense uh, philosophical discussion you might ask me, can you please tell me what computation is now? Like, uh, finally, you probably should give me an answer on this. Give me a definition of computation is right. Yeah, so yeah, I will promise I'll give you, but uh, let me first start with uh, some responses from you. I probably won't read it out, but you can read on the screen. This is, uh, these are all coming from some of the discussion we have, especially in this uh, the philosophical lecture this week. So at least we can see that through the lectures and discussion, yeah, everyone are uh, kind of inspired and to, to start to think about the different possibility of computation. But personally, if you really now ask me what is computation and force me to really give you a response, I'll say, okay, I, I resign. Let me try to form like a concretize my thinking and tell you uh, what computation is to me. So maybe the first attempt will be a more traditional view. Okay, let's say as a computer scientist, yeah, in the beginning, maybe we think of computation as a type of mechanical procedure or like mathematical calculation or like information processing. But like through the discussion, especially when we look into physics and biology, I think we, I, I also want to have, give it a, a second shot. I want to have a more generalized view on what computation is. And this is also one main things I want to convey in this uh, mini course. So now uh, the more general way view, at least for me to view computation is that computation generally contains the observation, the description, the analysis, the understanding and interpretation to the change of objects. Yeah, so here I kind of purposefully make this very high level and a little bit ambiguous. But uh, let me move on. And it could be either like some uh, mechanical or semantical or even intuitive, intuitive. And in the end, computation is not only a comfortable way of thinking, but could also be one of the fundamental principle behind reality. Yeah, so you can see that this, okay, this, this is certain definition and I definitely can see some of you probably not happy with this. For example, yesterday I actually discussed this with uh, one of our guest speakers, Zichen, for, for, for some time. And she got really confused by my words. And, and, and we have lots of discussion. And probably this is exactly my purpose of finally still put out my thought. It is actually exactly I want to, to think about and challenge about my definition. And through this process, maybe can help you shape a better understanding on yourself. So in the end, maybe, uh, I mean, this is just a working definition and also, in my opinion, maybe a good definition is not something that unchallengeable. It is a definition maybe can help people to finding a better, a better one uh, in the future. So I hope if you have time and if you have the interest, maybe think about uh, what do I mean here and also keep challenging me and finding your own definition to what computation is. Okay, but okay, so, but uh, even I gave uh, my uh, definition of what computation is. Yeah, that's not the end of uh, this concluding lecture. So in the rest of uh, this lecture, uh, let me give a recap on the mini course. In particular, I'll just give very, very fast overview. And then I'll give the stage to some of the volunteer the students here to share their thoughts. So in this mini course, we have like these three modules of mathematics, physics, and biology. 
And in the mathematical module, I in the beginning emphasized that I hope people, if you haven't like a, seen math too often before, you can think of math as an intuitive language for you to do like quite formal uh, analysis. So in the first lecture, we talk about how to like mathematical model problem as a formal language. And we see what Turing machine is as a mechanical procedure. And we see like how people postulate Turing machine being mechanical procedures through church Turing thesis. And we also see in the second lecture about the modern study, like study like Turing machine or other computational models, and also lots of different computational resources. And for complexity theorists uh, or theory, like a uh, series in CS, people study a uh, complexity classes to put like uh, computational problems costing similar resource together and studying their relation, especially through the notion of reduction. And finally, in the philosophy lecture, we talk about like the lake of uh, philosophy of uh, computation and also talk a little bit about my view, like maybe we need to distinguish theoretical computer science from the theory of computation. And uh, we also talk about the advantage, potential advantage of uh, merging different uh, understanding like the mathematics, heuristic experiment together, maybe all together can help us, can help us shape a better understanding in computation. Okay, so this is just a rough overview for this module. And now I'm going to invite uh, two of our uh, uh, students in the audience to share uh, their thoughts. So the first one will be Chifu and then uh, Mustafa, but uh, maybe let me uh, stop sharing for now and Chifu, you can, you can jump in. So hello everyone, it's my great pleasure to talk with you. And it's so wonderful to be in this class. I, maybe I can introduce myself a little bit. So I'm a third year mm -hmm. PhD student in Harvard. I'm doing population health science, which talks about how our environment and how the social interactions, like the work conditions might affect our health. And my research mainly focused on environmental exposure and the incidence of a congenital disease, which is called spina bifida. So as you can see, my background is totally like very biomedical. And actually I know very little about computation like the last time I did my formal computation is in my high school so I was like okay Chini has this course it's like my first time after high school but actually it's super great like all the teaching team are so supportive and Chini has conveyed the concepts not only from mathematic perspective but also from biologic so clearly like I can never imagine. And what I wish to share with you is like from population health science, we did some computation, but not really complex computation. We might count the numbers, like during the COVID time, we count the cases, the new cases, the mortalities, but we do count, but we don't do so much computation. And what is more important in our field is to interpret because we want to convey this information to the great, to the audience, which is the general population. And I think this course is really helpful because as Chini mentioned in the biologic, biologization, it's actually a multi-level factors. It's not only within the human, but also around all of us. Like there's genetic perspective, there's a, transcription translation but outside of us we have our neighborhood we have the greenness around us we have the grand environment like the working society like the work hour for all of us and the unmeasurable sometimes murky and but important like climate change which is actually changing everything that's around us in this small but Smoke planet we live upon. So I wish to share my thought on this point on the multi-level factors. So I think computation can help us identify some of the interpretable and implementable targets to promote health. And that's something it's still limited in 
population health science because we use a simpler model, but sometimes there are in there are some of the interactions in depth. And it leads to something that I will look forward to chat with Chinin and other PSC in the future for my study on gene environment interaction because we found that there are many genes that's building the pieces of the pathogenesis, but actually they are like playing a small part, but in, conju in conjunction, they might build a big effect. That's what happens in population health. Like one, it's contagious, just like COVID, it's like contagious to everyone. And it's just like the environmental factor, like air pollution and climate change, it affects someone a little, little, but it actually has an effect in the long run. So it's hard for us to tear apart the effect using current models. And I think this course built up a great background, great foundation for me to think deeper in this part. And lastly, I wish to sincerely thank all the teaching team and the other class, all the peers in this course again, because all the discussion are so fruitful. I learned so much. I, I tried to Google several of the words because I have never said it in my life. And I was like, okay, this is something new and it's so interesting. Although I, yeah, so I would say it's wonderful and I look forward to review it again and keep in contact with all of you in the near future. Thanks a lot. That's all from my side. Yeah, thank you, Chifu, for, for the, the sharing. And I'm also very, in, I mean, excited like for our future like interaction. Yeah, I'll be very happy to, to continue chatting and then discussing, yes, great. And now let me, uh, uh, because Mustafa now actually is in the army right now, but he, he recorded uh, his sharing. So now I'm going to share my screen and then play the video he want to, he has some few words for everyone. Can can everyone see the video? Yes. Okay. Then I'll get started. So welcome everyone to this five minutes talk by students on, on the concluding of the course. It's my pleasure to be with all of you, and many thanks for tuning, allowing me to have this great opportunity. So today, for this talk, I will be I want to talk about some special remarks, some great things about this mini course. I totally endorse and like about it. So first of all, this course, the, this course popularized theoretical computer science for more general audience, including the lay audience, everyone. It emphasized the conceptual idea, the message, um, the, the stories behind theoretical computer science or, 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 or some of its developments. Also, it was accessible for the lay audience, even without any math or science background. And finally, it addressed and emphasized the exchange of perspectives and discussions um, among all members and participants. So first of all, there is um, regarding popularizing theoretical computer science, there's a very common joke that TCS is about proving the hardness of problems which are solved in practice. And people and students have a big misconception that theoretical computer science is disconnected from reality. But Cheening in this mini course showed us the impact of theoretical computer science, how it, it, how it intersects benefits and influences other areas of science, including physics, biology, and pure math. And honestly, personally speaking, I'm jealous from physics celebrities like Richard Feynman, John Carroll, um, Sabina. Um, physics enjoys great, great content and materials for popularizing um, its theories. But in the situation of theoretical computer science, we don't, we're not there yet to communicate and outreach theoretical computer science for everyone. So this course is an excellent step in that direction. Secondly, the conceptual idea, there is a big mis misconception among students that theory work is meaningless, pointless. I mean, what's the point of just doing some routine paperwork? And uh, the cool thing they would think of is, is, is like, um, why don't we search for aliens, extraterrestrial life, or, or, or building rockets, something uh, more cooler than just writing some papers and manipulating symbols. But Cheening in this course highlighted the stories of science. He addressed the motivation, the conceptual idea, which had driven researchers to do and develop the theories they are doing. Why are we doing? Why are we pursuing that direction? What is the story behind developing some theory? 
Um, so it's not just about manipulating some random symbols. That's not the point about theoretical computer science or pure math. And in fact, let me address that there is more in science than just solving concrete problems. There are big motivations, big ideas that drive people, mathematicians, computer scientists, to pursue the research they are doing. Um, third, the accessibility. Uh, me, along many students, struggle with math. It's hard. In many cases, you cannot just grasp the content or you might not be able to solve a challenging problem. And it's easy to get lost in many cases. But for tuning course, it required no background, no science, no math background from participants or attendees. And if a student were able to answer some question, um, engage with a discussion only after one hour lecture, then for sure that would be a big motivating ignition for her or him to further study the content. So yes, um, this course helps many students to um, just have a starting point for further and motivating study. Finally, exchanging perspectives. Um, I think the world is becoming uh, more specialized. Expertise are becoming uh, more falling into very restricted or, or, or very specific departments. And that um, seems for me to lead people to fall into bubbles, getting restricted within um, certain boundaries. Um, and I think this is bad. I think people should be able to have more communication with outsiders, with people outside their area of expertise, outside their departments. And in this course, the training um, had in fact multi background attendees members. I met here students from different backgrounds, different ages, different countries, different cultures. Um, people come here um, even for different goals. We have students from humanities departments. Um, and the same for speakers, they were very various, the content. And we had also talks from humanities about creativity, art, intelligence, and so forth. So that was um, really very insightful to engage in such discussions. And for sure, if not, um, for this generous offering Chining had gave me to speak and enable students to just engage, take the spotlight, in no way, in no way I would have ever given this lecture. So Chining is very generous, allowing students to take the lead, speak, express themselves, and participate. Um, totally, totally indebted for him. Um, thank you so much. I hope more students and researchers follow the same steps you've taken in supporting theoretical computer science. Thank you all. Yes. Yeah, so thank you for uh, Chief and Mustafa again. Thanks all your kind words. And also thank you for your like sharing about what you get from the course, especially like you, you, you guys both talk a lot about like some hidden message I want to convey. So I'm very happy that you can speak out. Yeah, but uh, now maybe let's uh, move on to the second module of uh, the mini course, which is physics. And in the introductory lecture, I kind of want to motivate people, the study of physics to computation is like a physics. They are very good at having different kinds of worldviews to see like our reality. So we should focus on what's, what they are and maybe think about like what's the computation ingredient inside. In particular, in the first lecture, we starting from like Newton theory, say like, oh, Newton actually, Newton's law actually can be seen as like doing some local computations, yeah. But it probably is not super illuminating in the sense that you still need to solve lots of equations. It's not like giving you a big way to have a conceptualization. So we talk about classical mechanics can be viewed as actually it's like an optimization on a single, uh, single variables like the energy or the action. And we also talk about like statistical mechanics corresponding to like different computation ingredient optimization, sampling or counting. In the second lecture, we then move on to modern topics into quantum and like gravity theory. Yeah, we like uh, have a maybe a very roller coaster journey in the, trying to understand some basic concepts in quantum. And definitely, I cannot really capture everything, but hope to give people initiatives. And we talk about like quantum circuits and adiabatic quantum computation as two slightly different way of doing quantum computation. And we also have lots of uh, guest talk and advanced section on that. And finally, we also talk about like uh, how black holes or gravity connect to, to computation. In particular, just an hour ago, I also gave an advanced section for people who are interested. You're welcome to check it out. 
And finally, in the third philosophy uh, lecture, we talk about pan computationalism, which is like an ambitious philosophical view on how to view everything or as like certain computation or like a similar stuff. And then we talk about the different formation of church Turing thesis, and even talk about recent uh, breakthrough result called MIP psi equals to RE. But all this is like uh, trying to motivate us, like uh, trying to think about what like uh, computational view can be helpful in physical world. Well, in the meantime, uh, it could be very uh, dangerous if we directly apply computational view, it could be vacuous. So maybe adding certain constraints for example, here just saying that maybe we need to add some finite constraints. Yeah, like constraints in the physical world might guide us to like uh, see clear in the uh, computation. Okay, so now uh, it's also the stage for our two students in the audience, CJ and Lisa. So maybe I'll first uh, stop sharing and let CJ to talk. Okay, so. Uh... Let me uh, turn on my phone first. There we go. Okay, so let me share my screen so I can show the poster that I made. Uh, the poster is on the Discord, so feel free to use it as you want. It's um, basically just a way to um, help you all out explore uh, what modern physics really is. Um, the Really, the key lessons from physics that I think uh, we need to learn is that physics is the study of um, processes with two aspects, describing reality and measuring reality. Uh, computationally, uh, as Qining said, we use optimization in the empirical view, and then in the modern physics perspective, we use symmetries. Um, and then between those two views, physics has developed over a series of paradigm shifts. And then physics undergoing another paradigm shift, this time with information specifically. So Cheening has very nicely already described what we did in the modules, which is basically going over what the uh, postulates and principles of empirical physics are. Um, we have things like time is homogeneous, space is homogeneous, time, uh, space is isotropic, uh, the principle of stationary action, all that kind of stuff. And we can use these uh, principles to define, oops, too much, to define a basically geometry of uh, theoretical physics, uh, which Edward Witten described very nicely in a paper in 1987. Um, some of this stuff is very advanced mathematics that I don't quite know yet. So I'm not gonna be able to answer that quite yet. Um, but this, these three ideas are basically summarized by the idea of symmetries. Um, so you can do computation in terms of just the empirical view, like I said before, or you can just, or you can look at the general structure of what the theory is actually saying. Uh, and so symmetries are basically those things that allow um, for some parts to stay constant no matter what transformation you do. Uh, and there are uh, several types of them. Um, the most important ones are continuous ones that are used in space-time, uh, and you also have, also have discrete ones, which are used in quantum physics and in particle theories. Um, so these symmetries have a lot of open questions that we need to answer. For example, CPT symmetry is right now assumed to be the exact symmetry for particle physics, uh, but why then do we still have things like CP violations, CP being uh, charge symmetry and parity symmetry. Why do we still have violations like those? Uh, then you also have things like gauge symmetries where the Lagrangian uh, remains invariant. So this is the direct connection between the empirical and the theoretical viewpoints. Uh, in terms of paradigm shifts, the reason why I say we're going through a new one in information is because 
previously, we went through a paradigm shift with describing reality. Um, in other words, how do we describe what space and time are? Relativity, relativity um, changed it so that space time is absolute. Quantum changed the observer and experiment or measuring reality to be dependent versus independent in Newton. Um, and this is why quantum gravity has such a big problem right now is because we don't know how to uh, relate those two things. But information may be the new key into relating those two uh, paradigm shifts. And so you can see in the frontiers how much stuff is actually involved in information theory, even in philosophy and quantum theory parts from the mini course, those are very tightly involved with information theory. And in other fields, which is a very small example set, uh, we have constructor theory from David Deutsch. We have ZX calculus. Um, we have ADS CFT correspondence and quantum streamal surfaces, uh, measurement problems, and a whole bunch of other things that are related to information. Um, and if you want to look at other open problems, Alan Coley has a very nice paper on it. And you can see even from there how much of it is information based. Um, so basically, it's just, this is just another view six is really about. So that's all that I have then for that. Oh, thank you, CJ, so much. But uh, maybe before we move on to Lisa, can you, oh, I mean, can you introduce yourself a little bit? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like so are, yeah. Um, I'm CJ. I am an undergraduate in physics and mathematics at UCF in Orlando. Um, and I'm also the one who made the Discord server. So please feel free to use that um, for the rest of your life. Um, um, I also just want to say real quickly that you all are in a very unique position. Um, thanks to this course um, for uh, being able to explore a whole bunch of different areas. So please take advantage of that. Um, so yeah, that's basically that all I have. Yeah, thank you, CJ, so much yeah, for your wonderful sharing and impressive poster, as well as all your involvement in the mini course and the, in the Discord. Yeah, thank you so much. And now maybe let's uh, welcome Lisa to uh, share her thought. Hi guys, um, let me try to share my screen. If any luck, this will work. Okay, all right. Um, I didn't have anything particularly uh, technical. I just wanted to show you this picture of, um, I think these are called the antenna galaxies. They collided, it's two galaxies that collided around 200 to 300 million years ago. And because of the activity, there's just a lot of like star formation, I think. Um, I just think it's beautiful. It's one of the aspects we are able to enjoy in reality. Um, so I'm Lisa. I'm currently a third year uh, PhD student at MIT. Um, I guess my background is like my personal, um, I as a person have always really kind of been into my research and that has evolved from being focused in like pure math, like combinatorics, to um, TCS. Um, and then recently in the past like year or two, it's been in this area that Chinning has been um, teaching you guys in the course, uh, which is TCS uh, and reality. Um, so I think the main question I, um, so maybe let me first start by saying, um, I think it's really great. And honestly, to me, impressive that Chinning like had the initiative to put together this course um, like independently on his own. And I think you can all see from the thought and the care that he has put into like the lectures and the scheduling um, and getting information out to all of us that he, you know, he really cares about what he does and also about your learning experience. So I hope you um, just took, you know, even at least a few things away from the lectures you went to and um, we'll continue on your journey. Um, so I think the main thing I actually wanted to um, come here to say is I wanted to ask you the question of why do you do what you do? And this can be applied to research, work, hobbies, anything in life. Um, and for me, for me, my personal answer is I believe that I'm here to experience and express um, I'm, I believe I'm here to experience reality as much as I can and also to express it um, as fully as I can. And 
this basically led me down this path um, of development in my research um, to focusing on experiencing the physical world as much as I can and actually using um, my research, um, which is, you know, math and theory and like, you know, technical um, in nature to actually be my way of, of expressing how I'm experiencing and thinking about reality. So to me, um, I, I just wanted to ask you as a human, um, why do you do what you do um, to help to maybe help uh, probe you to find um, a bit of your inner purpose and to try to encourage you to see what you do, whether it's research, whether it's um, you know, technical math or experimental work or just completely uh, and wh whatever you do, I just wanted to encourage you to um, try to tie that to your purpose um, and to see that what you do is kind of like an art form. Like to me, um, math and theory and TCS is, um, there's, like per, there's like certain qualities about it, like it's precision and um, the logical structure and kind of the universality of it as a language as um, we've talked about in the course. Those are qualities that are appealing to me and I kind of use that as my form of media um, to express myself um, and my experience uh, in this lifetime. Um, and I just ultimately view my research more as my art now. Um, yeah, so I, I hope you all can uh, think about that question and also um, use what you've learned in this course as inspiration for that. Thank you, Lisa, for the amazing sharing and your questions. Yeah, I'll definitely also think about it a lot. Yeah, and thanks CJ and Lisa again for the sharing for the um, physical module. And, but due to time limit, maybe let me uh, move on. And if, I mean, otherwise I'll keep continuing like uh, commenting on your <laughs> sharing and my thoughts. Yeah, but for the final, um, modules uh, in the mini course, we talk about biology and probably this is the least familiar uh, area for, for people in the audience. And uh, I encourage people in the very beginning in the intro class, like uh, we are going to see lots of examples in biology and maybe this can be served as like, uh, I mean, your journey to collecting your like uh, samples and understanding to the world. And in the, end, in the end, just like enjoy the examples and build up your own stories. So what concretely we, we saw, like uh, we start with like a different like a uh, biological computation from like DNA, yeah, like to like um, membrane computing, like the immune system, et cetera. And then in the second lecture, we focus specifically on evolution and brain, which in my opinion are the two big mysteries in the biological world. We talk about like the Darwin's natural selection provide as a very good uh, conceptual computational principles and be, can be applied to lots of uh, different stuff and in different like instantiations. And we also talk about some examples of like the difficulties in neuroscience, especially there are different layers of uh, computation all mingled together. And in Braviva's talk, you also, yesterday you also have uh, some feeling on that, like uh, everything's mingled together. So we both think like uh, probably the next uh, decades, yeah, or like even the next century, it will be the era of like uh, for us to having a better understanding of our brain. And finally, in the philosophical lecture, we talk about the difficulties in studying uh, biology, especially in my opinion, the open endedness and the and the like emergent property are the main difficulties. And we also discuss a lot and slightly brainstorming how to do it. In particular, if we instantiate uh, into neuroscience, maybe one of the first uh, very uh, uh, concrete difficulties, how to merge, like how to bring the top-down levels and bottom-up levels together. And uh, there are different ways indeed for people to think in uh, like uh, about like studying like a brain using computational aspects. And they're actually not just one way. And, and I think we all kind of agree like uh, different approaches together can maybe give a better like overall rather than just a single approach. And finally, I also make an analogy to look at maybe how other fields assess. 
like can be in, can inspire us to study biology. Okay, so now uh, it's time for uh, the Ruth. I hope I pronounced your name correctly and Wei Ping to share your thoughts. So let me start sharing. I will start sharing. Hi everyone, I'm Dhruv. I'm an undergrad, undergrad student in India. And first of all, I wanted to thank Chinning for this course, uh, which was, which just gave me exposure to so many things that I wouldn't have been able to get here. And I just wanted to, i just share my screen. So, uh, in one of the lectures, we saw the simulated annealing algorithm being used to solve the traveling salesman problem. And which reminded me of this genetic algorithm, which I had implemented in one of my courses last time. So uh, think of this a genetic algorithm or of one of evolution or more specifically reproduction. So we'll uh, start our uh, problem with us. Uh, we'll make a sample space, a population of individuals now this can just be random to start with. So the algorithm starts with the selection of parents. Now we entail row as the mixing number, and this will tell us how many parents each child could have. And so these are all hyperparameters that we'll have to try, and we'll have to try various ones to find the most optimal. But these are the options that we have. Then these parents can either be selected randomly or from say 10 from uh, 10 random parents you're choosing the two with the highest fitness so these are all various heuristics that can be applied the after you, you pick your parents the production of offspring depends on various crossover points so i'll just show this next slide so to see here here we, we have only one crossover point and we can choose this randomly as well. So everything before that crossover point will be from one parent and everything after will be from another parent. So, so to have properties of both. Then uh, to ensure that we don't get stuck in local minimas, we introduce a mutation rate, which will have random changes to offspring with a small probability. So again, as you can see on the right here, we change just one bit of the final child uh, randomly uh, with a small probability. And finally, we decide what our population will be for the next iteration of this algorithm. And uh, in this, we have processes called elitism and culling. So elitism will uh, choose only the ones with the highest fitness. So this ensures that the average fitness never goes down. And in culling, you can also keep constantly reducing the population size. So this algorithm can be applied. Uh, this was applied by me to the three uh, CNF satisfiability problem, which is NP complete, which means that it can be reduced to any other NP problem in polynomial time. So getting a good solution to this is getting a good solution to all NP problems. So this is just the graph of the performance that I saw with this algorithm. In my implementation, we had a random initial population, two parents of each. Each uh, child had two crossover points. And I included elitism to make sure that the fitness always increased. I, I won't take much of your time. I just wanted to share this so to have just another idea of how we can take inspiration from biology and computation. And uh, if anyone is curious, I could share the code on Discord as well, because as a computer science student, I'm never fully satisfied until I actually see the code. Thank so you. Uh, yeah, thank you, Dero, for the amazing story. And do, I mean, maybe post some relative, uh, re relevant materials in the Discord. Thank you. And now maybe let's uh, welcome our final student, uh, Shara uh, Wei Ping. Hi everyone, I'm Wei Ping, and I'm the roommate. Chinin probably mentioned multiple times. Uh, allow me to share my screen. So I'll begin from my 
begin with my background. So I'm a four, I'm a fifth year graduate student in Harvard OEB Organismic and Evolutionary Biology. And uh, my background should be really different from most people here in the lecture. In the past 15 years, I probably uh, spent half time in the mountains or on the way in the mountains, on the way to the mountains. So uh, the photos at the lower left is the, yeah, is how I walk in the mountains with the avian species, insects and everything else. And the top, uh, the middle one is, uh, is a photo describing I am working in the museum with the microscope. And uh, from the analytical side, I also uh, code in a lot, programming a lot, because I work on the satellite images. I work on the, a lot of uh, computation. So I also code in that. So that's the connection between uh, my background with the computation. So here, I would like to share something uh, pretty much different from others, because uh, I am not familiar with math. I am not familiar with physics, and I, yeah, I haven't fully understand all the lecture yet. I'm still digesting and processing them. So how can the, you know, how can a guy from the biological background to, you know, fully, fully apply or fully use this lecture to improve our understanding or to improve our work? So this is what I want to share with you today. So this is the map Chinin provided to us at the very beginning, right? Everything correlated to computation. So computation is the center. Then we cross link with physics, math, and, and biology. Uh, but from my, my point of view, from my point of view, or how I use this topology, is that I begin from biology. That's my background. And I, through the computation, this is a tool or this is a media because I, I code in, I, I program in. So, I understand more about computation. So I have better chance to understand math and physics. So that's how I use the entire lecture. So I can understand math and physics, though I wasn't, I wasn't familiar with them, but through the, this course, through this inspiring mini course, I, I can learn more about math. I can learn more about physics. So this is the first way I use this course. Okay. The second way I use this course is by studying the interaction between math and computation and studying the interaction between physics and computation, I can now try to link biology with math and try to link biology with physics more easily. So that's what I, what I feel so inspiring when I, you know, when I uh, listen to those lectures, guest speakers and, and those talks. This is the part I'm most amazing. And also the third thing I can, I can do through this lecture, through this course, is that by learning through the interaction between computation and math, computation and physics, I can actually think deeper about how biology can interact with computation. So here, this is what I think is also really inspiring because uh, from the biological aspect, people usually use computation as a tool or, or purely, mostly purely as a tool. So there is a lot of possibility and, and uh, tendency we can emulate what happens between math and computation, between physics and computation. Then we can develop our, our part, the correlation between computation and biology. Yeah. So again, thank you for this wonderful, wonderful course. And thank you for tuning in to organize this amazing, amazing course. And thanks for the TF, spend a lot of time here and also the guest speakers. Yeah, I'm really, really inspired by the entire course. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Wei Ping, for, for the sharing. And I also need to personally thank you a lot, like for Teach me lots of uh, biology, either content or like uh, like the philosophy. Yeah, yeah, lots of the material actually is like inspired by Wei Ping and discussed with him. Yes, and also thank uh, the roof again for your sharing. And let me now quickly go back to our slides. Uh, yes. Yeah. So finally, yeah. So as uh, how we. Uh, so previously and all by the, all the student speakers. Uh, in this mini course, we cover a lot about the intersection or like the interplay between computation and math and physics and biology on a more higher level through examples, stories, and appreciation. 
And I also, as I heard I mentioned a warning in the very beginning, yeah, we definitely not cover lots of stuff. And uh, there, I mean, it's probably in, impossible for us to cover so many things because our knowledge can only be finite while our ignorance necessarily be infinite. So I also hope that this actually gives you a warning, but also a wish in the following sense, like uh, we are still human, be human beings and we are finite. And uh, we always make mistakes Yeah, from time to time. I have to admit that I definitely make some mistakes in the course. Actually, some people pointed out to me and I'll try to fix that. So I think this is uh, all telling us uh, like uh, we shouldn't think that we actually learn a lot. So actually, I hope through this mini course, you actually should feel that, oh, I don't know so much rather than I, ah, oh, now I learn so, so much. So rather than feeling comfortable, I feel like I hope through this mini course can help you know what you don't know even more. And also, I also want you to be more critical to what I told you. Because as everyone said, that like, this is a really like a simplified version of all the important series and important knowledge in the human assets. So I hope in your further discovery, you also be critical to what I told you. And maybe you will come up with either a better like a narrative or also like dig into more details. So I wish we all in the future can be more confident in, the, in ourselves but also be humble in the sense that we have to acknowledge we also make mistakes. And I also hope we can be curious, but in the meantime, can also be rigorous in our like a scientific journey. So finally, the final words is like, I hope this mini course through the uh, like interplay between math, physics and biology can like uh, give you a new lens uh, to look at computation or even other uh, subjects you're interested in. And this is just the beginning of a lifelong journey. Okay, so let me uh, conclude and end this course uh, with some uh, acknowledgement. First, I want to thank uh, the university, especially the student council to provide this opportunity for me to offer in this mini course. And I also want to show my uh, gratefulness to my advisor boss. Yeah, he gave me unconditional support and trust and let me like try, try everything. I don't think the usual advisor will allow their grad students in their fifth year to spend a whole month like doing something quite irrelevant to like a publishing paper in top conferences. So I definitely thank him for his trust yeah, and support. I also thank our six amazing uh, guest speakers, Li Jie, Xin, Sona, Anjo, Zicheng, and Brabiba. Yeah, you guys uh, increased the depth and breadth of the course by a lot. And I also want to thank all the teaching staff, uh, and many of you are here. Like it is like uh, you, you guys like uh, really make this course like uh, can can move on. In particular, when we have lots of people, you answer so many questions. Yeah, and also provide so many good uh, advanced section broaden uh, the topics a lot. So finally, I also want to special thanks to some people, some overlap with the previous part. First is actually Zichen, like uh, discuss with me a lot on lots of the slides and give me lots of uh, feedback. And also Xun also gave me a lot of uh, initial feedbacks on the uh, physics part. And Wei Ping also gave me lots of uh, comments and suggestions in the biology part, as well as like through the first week of the lecture. And also Lisa also, I mean, especially maybe inspired me a lot in the philosophy part and the physics part. And uh, also like for our uh, senior teaching staff, Rayo, Simon, Salvador, Palat, and Eric, thank you guys like for providing amazing advanced section and also amazing supports in the chat and the Q&A. You really increase the depth and the broaden uh, the mini course by a lot. And also thanks CJ, Mustafa, Amen for like uh, like like uh, helping the community to building a community and like uh, fostering uh, like a uh, lots of discussion. And thank the two of our junior uh, teaching staff, Sonia and uh, Katkia. Like uh, I know you guys actually are just like a junior undergrads, and but I'm very surprised that your curiosity actually remind me of the good old days when I was uh, as young as you guys. And uh, even though this is maybe the very first few presentations of your life, but I think you guys did a very, very good job and I can see you also want to improve. I really encourage you to, uh, to pursue this journey. 
And finally, thank uh, two of my friends here at Cambridge, Justin and Sophia. Like, uh, give me lots of uh, comments and support throughout the, the mini course. So finally, uh, the stage is yours. It's uh, like, I hope this is just the beginning. And uh, the initiative is on your side. And I just want to let you know that uh, I, I will try my best to be supportive and we can still connect to each other like through Discord or like other format. But uh, do like, uh, let me know what happened next. And I also try to update like my future thoughts. Maybe we will have another mini course uh, next year, who knows? Yeah. So I guess I'll stop here in this slides to uh, let people, you can start to posting questions for our next uh, panel discussion. And also I will be appreciated if you can fill up the final survey required by the school. And uh, yeah, we will see each other in 10 minutes, I guess. So let me stop my recording. <laughs>